Hello everyone, welcome to the 160 Literary and Jury Charge. I'm going to start off with an excerpt from Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, okay? And this is on Imagine Yourself at Your Own Funeral. Here we go, ready? This strategy is a little scary for some people, but universally effective at reminding us of what's important and most important in our lives. When we look back on our lives, how many of us are going to be pleased at how uptight we were almost universally when people look back on their lives while on their deathbed, they wish that their priorities had been quite different. With few exceptions, people wish they hadn't sweated the small stuff so much. Instead, they wish they had spent more time with the people and activities that they truly loved and less time worrying about aspects of life that, upon deeper examination, really don't matter all that much. Imagining yourself at your own funeral allows you to look back at your life while you still have the chance to make some important changes. While it can be a little scary or painful, it's a good idea to consider your own death and in the process, your life. Doing so will remind you of the kind of person you want to be and the priorities that are most important to you. If you're at all like me, you'll probably get a wake up call that can be an excellent source of change. <clears throat> all right, I have some land description. Here we go, ready? To the intersection with the east line of the southwest quarter of Section 8, Township 13 South, Range 20 East, Pilot Butte Base and Meridian, as says, said section is shown on the United States government township plats, thence no northerly along the east line of the southwest quarter of said Section 8 being also along the existing city limits of said city to the intersection with the center line of West Century Avenue, thence westerly along the center line of West Century Avenue and along the north line of lot 27 of said Bullard Lands Irrigating Subdivision Number 1, being also along the north line of the Fig Garden Estates Number 12 as shown on the map thereof, filed in the office of the Deschutes County Records to the point of beginning. All right, moving right into some jury charge. This is general. Here we go, ready? The order in which the instructions are given has no significance as to their relative importance I have not intended by anything I have said or done or by any questions that I may have asked to intimate or suggest what you should find to be the facts on any questions submitted to you or that I believe or disbelieve any witness. If anything I have done or said has seemed to so indicate, you will disregard it and form your own opinion. Both sides are entitled to the individual opinion of each juror. It is the duty of each of you to consider the evidence for the purpose of arriving at a verdict if you can do so. Each of you must decide the case for yourself, but should do so only after a discussion of the evidence and the instructions with the other jurors. You should not hesitate to change an opinion if you are convinced it is erroneous. However, you should not be influenced to decide any question in a particular way because a majority of the jurors or any of them favor such a decision. The attitude and conduct of jurors at the beginning of their deliberations are matters of considerable importance. It is rarely productive of good for a juror at the outset to make an emphatic expression of his opinion on the case 
or to state how he intends to vote. When one does that at the beginning, his sense of pride may be aroused and he may hesitate to change his position even if shown that it is wrong. Remember that you are not partisans or advocates in this matter, but are judges. Each count charges a district, or excuse me, a distinct offense. You must decide each count separately. The defendant may be found guilty or not guilty on any or all of the offenses charged. Your finding as to each count must be stated in a separate verdict. Okay, I have an article here. This is Overcoming Obstacles, and it's called Soaring Free. Okay, here we go, ready? A new home, a swimming pool in the backyard, two nice cars in the driveway, and my first child on the way. After nine years of marriage, I had it all, or so I thought. I was only days away from delivering my first child when a conversation with my husband shattered the world I lived in. I want to be here for the baby, but I don't think I love you anymore, he said. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. He had grown distant during my pregnancy, but I had related it to his fear and concern over becoming a parent. As I probed him for explanations, he told me he'd had an affair five years earlier and hadn't felt the same about me since. Thinking only of my baby and wanting so desperately to save my marriage, I told him I could forgive him for anything and that I wanted to work things out. That final week before my son was born was an emotional roller coaster ride. I was so excited about the baby, so scared that I was losing my husband and feeling so guilty at times because I thought it was the baby's fault that all this was happening. TJ was born on a Friday in July. He was so beautiful and so innocent. He had no idea what was happening in his mother's world. He was four weeks old when I discovered the real reason for his father's distance. Not only had he had an affair five years earlier, but he had started another affair during my pregnancy that was continuing. So TJ and I felt, or excuse me, left our new home, the swimming pool, and all of my broken dreams behind when he was five weeks old. We moved into an apartment across town. I sank to depths of depression that I hadn't known existed. I had never before experienced anything like the loneliness of spending hour after hour alone with a newborn infant. Some days the responsibility of it all overwhelmed me and I would shake with fright. Family and friends were there to help Yet there were so many hours filled with thoughts of broken dreams and despair. I cried often, yet I made sure that TJ never saw me cry. I was determined this wasn't going to affect him. From somewhere inside, I always found a smile for him. The first three months of TJ's life passed in a blur of tears. I went back to work and tried to hide from everyone what was going on. I was ashamed, though I don't know why. It was a Saturday morning when TJ was four months old that I hit the bottom. I had just had yet another emotional discussion with my husband, and he had stormed out of my apartment. TJ was sleeping in his crib, and I found myself sitting on the bathroom floor curled up in a ball, rocking back and forth. I heard myself say out loud, I don't want to live anymore. After saying it, the silence was overwhelming. I believe God was there with me that day. After saying it, I sat there in silence for a while, letting the tears flow down my cheeks. I don't know how much time passed, 
but from somewhere within me arose a strength I hadn't felt before. I decided then and there to take control of my life. I was no longer going to give my husband the power to affect my life in such a negative way. I realized that by focusing so much of my attention on his weaknesses, I was allowing those weaknesses to ruin my life. That very same day, I packed a suitcase for TJ and myself, and we went to spend the weekend at my brother's house. It was the first trip I'd taken by myself with TJ, and I felt so strong and so independent. I remember on the two-hour drive, I laughed, talked, and sang to TJ all the way. It was during that trip that I realized what a savior my son had been to me during all those months. Knowing that he was there every day and that he needed me had kept me going and given me a reason for getting out of bed in the morning. What a blessing he was in my life. From that day forward, I forced myself to focus on the confidence and strength that had brought me up from the bathroom floor. Having changed my focus to such positive thoughts, I couldn't believe the difference it made in my life. I felt like laughing again, and I enjoyed being around people for the first time in months. I began the process of discovering the individual I had kept hidden inside myself for so long, a process that I am still enjoying today. I had entered counseling shortly after TJ and I moved out of the house, and I continued in that counseling for several months after the day I felt I had hit bottom. When I no longer felt the need for her support and guidance, I remember the last question my counselor asked me before I left her office that day. What have you learned? She asked. I didn't even hesitate in answering. I've learned that my happiness has to come from within. It is this lesson that I am reminded of every day that I long to share with others. I had made the mistake in my life of basing my identity on my marriage and all the material things surrounding that relationship. I've learned that I am responsible for my own life and happiness. When I focus on my life on another person, or let me say that again, when I focus my life on another person and try to build my life and happiness around that person, I'm not truly living. To truly live, I need to let the spirit within me be free and rejoice in its uniqueness. It is in this state of being that the love of another person becomes a joy and not something to be afraid of losing. May your spirit be free and soar high. Great article there. All right. An article here on nutrition. What's your number? Here we go. What is pH? What does it do? Why do I need to know about my pH? pH is potential hydrogen. pH, or potential for hydrogen, is the measure used to determine whether something is an acid or alkaline. Since our bodies are largely made up of water, a train as you will, which is biologically useful in allowing nutrients, oxygen, and biochemicals to be transported from place to place within our bodies. This water-based train can have either acid or alkaline properties, which are measured by a graduated scale called pH, while 1.0 to 6.9 is considered acidic, 7.0 is neutral, and 7.1 to 
14.0 is alkaline. The lower the pH number, the greater it is. And the higher the pH number, the greater the alkalinity. Why should I be concerned about my pH? Why does your pH level have a profound effect on health and disease? The importance of acid and alkaline balance for health, monitoring and measuring your pH level. A great approach to supporting a baseline weight loss program is to begin utilizing Protein Greens Advanced as a meal replacement. Calorie curb for curbing the urge to snack on unwanted calorie intake and ultra pure omega 3s regularly. Cut down your intake of processed foods. Eat five small meals a day. Drink plenty of water. Stop eating late at night and start regular aerobic exercise if at all possible. Superfoods. Superfoods are a category of foods found in nature. They are superior sources of essential nutrients. Nutrients we need but can't make ourselves. Growing concerns for the quality of foods grown on mineral depleted soils make superfoods a must for daily health. They are nutritionally more potent than regular foods and are wonderful food sources of antioxidants for healthy healing. Superfoods are nutrient dense and calorie sparse. Greens are good, but green superfoods are even better. Green superfoods have the highest concentrations of easily digestible nutrients, fat burning compounds, vitamins and minerals to protect and support healing in the body. They contain a wide array of beneficial substances including proteins, protective photonutrients, and healthy bacteria helping you to build cleaner muscles and tissues, aid your digestive system function, and more effectively helps protect you against disease and illness. A healthy lifestyle incorporating a variety of superfoods will help you maintain your weight, fight disease, and live longer. These multitasking superfoods provide multiple disease-fighting nutrients, fill you up, and provide plenty of energy without the calories. Oh, did we mention that it tastes good too? And then the next part is separating the fact from fiction. Okay. All right. I've got one last article here on problems shared by businesses. That will probably be our last one. We'll have to see. Here we go. Ready? Um, I'm going to give you a word list. Institution, administration, universal, forfeited, partner, um, facilities, competition, capital, merger, management, research. Here we go. Ready? Most of the problems that exist in large businesses also exist in smaller businesses, but to a different extent. All businesses are faced with universal problems, which include financing, management, competition, and research. Whether large or small, businesses all have a need for capital to get started and to expand. Sources of capital are widely varied and can range from a friend or relative to a large financial institution. Establishing a credit rating is rather or is another difficult process. Small business owners frequently borrow from friends or relatives, savings or the small business administration for loans. Accepting a partner or partners is another way of obtaining capital, although some degree of control in the operation is usually forfeited at this time. 
Larger businesses may acquire additional capital through the issuance of stock, mergers, sale of existing facilities, and loans from banking institutions. All right, and that concludes our literary and jury charge for the 160 class. Have a great day.